So with that, I'd like to go and demonstrate Michi swap. So this is a this is a swap that's created directly on the Mitis layer two. So this is an extension of Ethereum. And uh, with that, it's, it has faster and cheaper transactions than Ethereum itself, while still maintaining the security and the decentralization of it. Now, just to uh, go over what this program does. So this is a decentralized exchange. What does a decentralized exchange do? So let's demonstrate it with a swap. Now we have Mitis tokens over here, and let's say we want to swap it to ETH. So we're taking our Mitis tokens and we're swapping it to ETH. Now again, these are test net prices, so they don't reflect the actual market prices. But let's say you want to transfer 0.01 .01 of our Mitis tokens into ETH. So right now, the price per ETH is around two METIS tokens. So two METIS tokens is equivalent to one ETH. So it's a two to one ratio in that case. There is different factors at play here. There is the slippage tolerance. Now, I, um, I'll, I'll just explain slippage in case, uh, in, in, in case um, people here don't know, but slippage is the, when a transaction essentially happens, it's that period of time where other transactions can come before and then alter that price. So on a transaction on the base Ethereum network typically takes, well, depending on the gas fee, typically takes around maybe 10 to 15 minutes. And it, it can increase depending on if you, if you have a larger gas, for, uh, gas fee. But essentially what this means is that any transactions that are processed behind or in front of you can alter the price substantially, so you'll end up be you'll end up getting potentially less uh, ETH than you would. So in this case, it's estimated that I'll get 40, 0 0.0494, but my minimum, it, including the slippage, would be the the 0 0.0048 and, and and so on. So that's what slippage is. Now the price impact is important. Now what a swap is, is essentially a liquidity pool. The liquidity pool has two pairs. There's the METIS token and then there's the ETH token, but they can be any sort of pair that revolves around two tokens. So in this case, we're using the example of METIS tokens as well as ETH tokens in that case. So these two pairs have that, have liquidity and the liquidity provider needs to provide those two currencies in order to provide liquidity to the pool. Now, in this case, this is like a market maker. This is a market making functionality. But instead of having a market maker you know, buy, buy you know, one currency and sell it off of another, this, you provide both currencies and you let the smart contract do the work. So this is all on the blockchain. And so just an example, um, if I were to buy more than, than, uh, than what is in the pool, there would be a price impact. So notice how the price impact changes and notice how the price per METIS changes as well. So if we, let's say, increase it by a factor of 10 again, so notice how the price changes right here. And then if we put a zero, it changes again. So now it's, it's three and a half METIS per ETH. And then, and then again, 16 METIS per ETH. So the more, the more essentially we want to withdraw, the more the price is going to, to be impacted, the more that it's going to cost in, in that case to swap those cryptocurrencies. It'll never reach zero. So the amount of ETH in the pool will still remain. So I can put as many zeros and, and I mean, of course it'll, it'll um, it, but it won't impact it by 100%. It's, it's based on the, on the formula of uh, X times Y equals K and we'll see like a visual demonstration of that. But let's proceed with the swap just with that. So, so we swap essentially METIS tokens to ETH tokens. This is as if going to a currency exchange and going and, and swapping USD to Canadian dollars or, or, or any, any sort of currency exchange like that. So we confirm the swap. I'm not sure if you can see the notification right in front of me, but there is a MetaMask notification. No. I'm going to click confirm. Okay. So in that case, it doesn't matter. In, in this case, we submit the transaction. It processed. And then our value of METIS changed and our balance of ETH has changed as well. So we have, we have essentially swapped, successfully swapped 
our Metis tokens with ETH tokens. So that's pretty good. Now, my description might have been a bit too descriptive. Let's show you a visual representation let, with a demonstration of me being a liquidity provider. So in this case, we're going to actually create a token. Now this token, again, can be, can be whatever name and, and many tokens have funny names. I'll just name myself about, and then this is the PAV token. So I can set the amount, let's set it to 100 just for fun. So this is again, test tokens. And we are creating a token right here. And when we create the token, we're able to add it to MetaMask. And then we have that supply in there. So let's take a look at our MetaMask. And then we have, I'm not sure if you can see that, that uh, sort of. Yes, yes, yes. I can. excellent. Okay, so we have our 100 PAV token. So perfect, awesome. But they're not worth anything. Since we just created it, it's not worth anything. We can't trade it. It's, it's not available on the open market. So in this case, we're going to go to the pool. And as you can see, I've already managed a couple of pools. I did like a bunch of test transactions in, in here, uh, but we're gonna create a pair. So in this case, we provide liquidity for METIS. So there's a base of, of METIS tokens, but we also want to provide the PAV token. So in this case, this pool doesn't exist since I created PAV just now. And in this case, I want to supply, let's say, a small amount. 0 0.1 METIS tokens is equal to 50 PAV tokens. So in this case, the ratio of this is for every METIS token, it's going to be 500 PAV tokens. Now, of course, there's not that much in supply. So this is a pretty, pretty rare token, although it is going for very cheap. Uh, but in this case, uh, in, in this case, we are supplying the liquidity and we have to provide both sides. So we have to provide both the Michi side and we have to provide both the PAV side. So you can't just provide the Michi's token and say, well, you know, no, you have to provide both. And that's, that's one of the, the um, aspects of providing liquidity is that you need both the tokens in order to provide that liquidity. In order for the smart contract to withdraw my PAV tokens, I need to approve it. So I'm going to approve it. There's a MetaMask notification, you probably don't see it, but I'm going to confirm. Essentially, this allows the smart contract to withdraw my PAV tokens directly from my wallet. Now, since this is a trusted application, if you were doing this with an untrusted application, it could, it could lead to bad circumstances in, in, in this case. But since it's trusted, we approve it, and now we're able to supply this liquidity. So we create this pool and we have to approve this transaction. Again, every single transaction needs to be approved. And so we approve it, the transaction is submitted, it's confirmed, and we can see, if we go into the swap, we can see that right here, we supplied the liquidity, our balance of Michi's tokens has, changes, has changed. And if we search up, our PAV, then we're able to see that there is in fact liquidity in here. Of course, there will be a very big price impact. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna add so a couple more zeros, but essentially we've created our pool and we can now anyone on the network, not just us because we created it, but anyone on the network can come in and swap that liquidity, swap Michi's tokens for that PAV token or PAV token for the Michi's token. But of course, since I'm the sole owner of the PATH token, that's, it's, it's kind of hard to, to do it the other way. So in this case, we can actually view our pool that we've created and we're going to import it and uh, into the PAV right here. And so we see that we have our pool share. Oh, let's I actually just click manage this pool. So essentially we, we have an amount of tokens that we get, we own 100% of the pool. That means that the transaction fee that you get, so if we, if we go back and, and do the, um, let's say, and, and any sort of token, no, there's no, no liquidity. Yeah, so yeah, there has to be some value of token in here. 
in order for it to balance out. So typically ETH is, is, is the uh, one the most liquidity with that. Uh, so there's the, the liquidity provider fee. So because I'm managing a pool right here, I get 100% of the 0.3% fee from all of the trades that happen within that pool. So that's pretty lucrative if that those trades are happening a lot. Now, in I have also some ETH tokens in, in, in here, Mutis ETH pair, and I only get 0 0.13, and I only get 0.13% of the 0.3% uh, of all of the transactions uh, that occur uh, within that pool. If I want to add more liquidity to, let's say, the Mutis ETH pool, then I have to supply uh, both Mutis and ETH. So I can't just take my 0 0.66 So because I don't have enough ETH. If you check my MetaMask wallet on this test network, I only have 0 0.179 ETH. So in this case, I cannot supply the liquidity that's in this pool. So I have to choose a lower amount that corresponds to the, to the amount of ETH that I, that I realistically have. So that, in a nutshell, is a DEX, and there's there's a lot of content. There's probably going to be a lot of questions, so it, please jot down your questions and, and and write them down. Hopefully, I can get them answered uh, by the end of this presentation.